This is Algebra 2, Chapter 7, Section 5, in which we will be studying properties of logarithms. There are several properties that logarithms have. Three of them are really important to us. The first property that we really need to worry about is the product property. When you have a log of a product, you can take that apart as the sum of two separate logs. So log of AB would equal log of A plus log of B. Notice we kept the same base X all the way through. A product inside the log becomes a sum on the outside of the log. Similarly, the quotient property, when you have a division going on inside a log, that becomes a subtraction when you split the, the log apart. So log of A over B would be equal to log of A minus log of B. These two are effectively the same property. Multiplication is addition. Division is subtraction. Okay, they're inverses of each other. Multiplication and division are inverses. Addition subtraction are inverses. The third one is the exponent rule or the exponent property. If you have a power inside your log, log of a to the b, that's the same thing as b times log of a. The power that's up there slides down in front. Okay, the power goes down to the front. So we're going to apply these logs. And they're going to give these to us to apply in a couple of different ways. They're going to ask us, in this example, based on log base 3 of 7 being equal to a certain value, 1.7712, our job is to find log base 3 of different values. Now, there's more information available than it looks like. When you have log to a certain base, you know another log that's important. Log base 3 of 3 equals 1. Log base 12 of 12 equals 1. Log base 8 of 8 equals 1. As long as these two are the same value, the log is 1. So we're going to use this information along with the given information to figure out how to find log base 3 of 21. Well, how can I rewrite 21 so that it's some combination of 7s and or 3s? 21 is 3 times 7. Now I have a multiplication going on. And we saw on the previous property page that a product inside the log is equal to the sum outside the logs, or two separate logs. So log of 3 times 7 becomes log of 3 plus log of 7. Log 3 of 3 is 1. Log 3 of 7 is 1.7712. So we'll substitute those values in, and then a little simple arithmetic finishes the problem. Let's tangle with our second example. We have log base 3 of 3 sevenths. Well, 3 sevenths, that's a quotient. Since it's a quotient, we can separate it as a subtraction problem. So log base 3 of 3 minus log base 3 of 7. We know values for log base 3 of 3 and log base 3 of 7. So we'll substitute those in, and then a little subtraction gives me negative 0.7712. Okay. One more of these type problems where we're going to have to mess around with this number to turn it into something involving 3s and or 7s. Log base 3 of 343. Well, 343 is 7 to the third power. If you remember back to our 
cubes list that we had back in chapter 6. That's one of the numbers that was in our cubes list is 343. It's the same as 7 to the third. Well, since this has got a power on it, I can drop the power down in front. So I have 3 times log base 3 of 7. Log base 3 of 7, I know the value of. It's 1.7712. 3 times that gives me our final answer of 5.3136. So whatever value they give you here inside the log, you're going to have to make it into things involving numbers that you know. In this case, 7 and 3. The other type of problem they're going to throw at us is to solve an equation. Now we saw last time around that if we had the same log on both sides we can cancel the logs. But in order to have the same log we need to put these two together. I see an addition in between the logs. Well, addition between the logs is the same as multiplication on the inside. So this side's going to become 27 times 3 inside a single log. And this 2 that's in front, the exponent rule, says it can go back up top as x squared. And I'm doing the opposite direction of what the uh, property said on the first page. Instead of going left to right, I'm going right to left. I went from a sum to a product instead of going from a product to a sum. Well, now we're in business because the logs can cancel out. And when I take the square root of both sides, i got to remember I could have a positive or a negative answer. But as we said last time, you can't take the log with a negative number. So the negative answer is bad, but the positive answer is still good. So x equals 9. One last problem. This one's a little bit different, a little bit trickier, because we have logs on the left, but we don't have a log on the right. That's okay. We can handle that, because we know how to do the flip-flop step. Before we can flip-flop, though, we need to put this together. It's a sum, so it becomes a product. x times x plus 5 inside the log. Now we can flip-flop this. Remember, we keep the base as the base and trade the things so that the 6 now is with the 2. And I went ahead and distributed on the left. Well, 6 squared is 36. I can move it over. Now I can factor. Factors of 36 to subtract to make 5. Solve the two factors to get the two answers. But remember again, you can't take the log of a negative, so this negative 9 is a bad number because x has to be bigger than 0 to start with. So x equals 4 is our final solution. Okay. A lot to uh, deal with there. We did properties of logs. That was the key to the whole thing, is knowing your three main rules and then being able to apply them. If you had questions along the way, hopefully, as always, you wrote those down, bring them in, and we will see you in class.